Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lorelai Shamayo. This is Me, We, Metaphysics and Wellness Fairs for Energizing Body, Mind, Heart and Soul. We have events throughout the Northwest and online, so many events online these days. We interview our practitioners and our vendors so you get a chance to know who we are before you meet us at an event. I'm here today interviewing Justin Ellidge. Justin, it's lovely to be with you. Lovely to be with you as well, Lorelai. So tell us a bit about you. What is it that you do? What do you offer at our events? I am known as a medical intuitive and the work that I do goes so much more than just the physical body. I also help heal the soul and the person's journey on this path in this lifetime and many lifetimes. In my direct practice, I work one-on-one -on -one with an individual to help clear out the physical problems so we can open up more space for the dynamic of the spiritual issues. For some though, it may be a spiritual issue that's driving the physical, and for others, the physical issue affecting the spiritual. So in my work and my practice, it's the entire person that I look at, literally and spiritually and figuratively. When I'm working with someone, I start feeling at times their pain. I start feeling their angst or issues in addition to just seeing the physical issue. And that's where issues of this life, um, family issues, um, abuse or other past lives issues can also enter into the circumstance of what we are considering life and how to find a way to improve the life of what one is living. Mm. So it sounds like people come to you for all kinds of different things and then it like it wanders wherever it needs to go in your session. Yes, I, I mean, I've worked in the world of engineering and issues have come up and people have had materials or devices and I'm holding it or looking at it and it's like, well, this needs to change here. Another time um, I was holding some nutritional supplements and the room was filled with doctors. And I just picked up the bottle and was telling them what the nutritional supplements were. And one of the aspects of it, what I thought would be improving, they're looking at me and go, how can you do that? And it's like, I can't explain how I can do it. I just know that I can. So when I originally started working on people doing massage therapy years and years ago, I would put, as I worked on them, I would start to see their life show up. And generally a person would go completely out of the body and I would work through the different layers working one-on-one. -on -one. So after a few detours and the medical intuition came in, then I knew this was something that I needed to make so much more than just um, an interest. I don't even wanna say a hobby, that would not be correct, but the universe says, no, you need to do this. And so this is my full-time vocation. Uh, helping individuals. I work with individuals directly uh, by phone, by Zoom, uh, locally and around the world. Great. So is that some of how your work got started when you started being aware of these things as you were working physically with people? Or what were some of the early, what were some of the beginnings for you? And Well, the very early when I was doing massage back in the early 90s, I would be working with someone and I would start seeing an image or a video or a film would start playing of that person's life. Uh, one woman I saw as I'm working on her, she was then probably in her mid fifties. And I see this little girl running through a field and this looks like a farm hand running after her. And the little girl darts in the barn and the male goes in there. And so I didn't know how else to express it, but I said, you know, I'm getting this image of around a farm. Did you ever grow up on a farm? She said, yeah, I'm funny, yeah, I should say that I did. And so I started to describe it and she just went completely rigid. And I said, I understand. You don't have to go into the details. Just let me work with this. And as I kept working with her, she very much relaxed and calm to where she went completely again out. The guides, the masters working through me. But I wasn't prepared at that time to do it full time. I ended up going into nursing. So it was another aspect of healing, which I needed to do for another uh, life issue that I had to accomplish. So in 2005, I was up at a retreat on the mountain, Kumbaya, uh, and a guy was being worked on by a chiropractor, twisting his back and neck to get rid of a pain I thought was in his shoulder. So I kneeled down above this man on the floor, put my hands above his chest and closed my eyes. And in that perfect moment of just being present and quiet, I saw this image of a broken rib in the man. And I just backed way up and I said, Ananda, where are you feeling this pain? Because he was a big construction worker, big guy. And so I thought it was neck or shoulder. And he said, oh, I'm feeling it right here on my right side. And I said, you, my friend, have a broken rib. And the whole room went completely silent. 
because they'd been watching the chiropractor doing the neck and the twist and you know could have punctured along. So three days later, in the biblical term, he was down the mountain and got an X-ray and confirmed that he didn't have, have a uh, a broken rib. So from that moment, I told the story to a friend of mine, Nancy, and she said, "Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for you to understand your own gifts. This just sounds perfect." And so been thinking about it. I was working in a wood shop at the time at a design college in Pasadena, California, covered in sawdust, helping students build and make stuff. And uh, she called me on the phone and said, I have a client here on the table working on her doing massage. Can you tell me what's going on? So yes, uh, she's 55, red hair, freckles. She's about 40 pounds overweight. She's pre-diabetic. And that's where she really has to get on some other things. And I, okay, gotta go, hung up the phone. And this just kind of snowballed and I'll back up is when I first told Nancy about this event at the mountain, she said, well, why don't you view my health? So I'm on my headset driving home from work and I start telling her about things about her that she never shared with me. And I, I hit like 11 points of issues in her body that, and she was just, I was in tears at this point, I was really doing it. And though from that experience, she then would call me every month or so and I'd be at work and she said, I have a client, can you tell me? And I'd go into it while I'm at work and then um, third or fourth time this happened, um, and I got it after I shared the information, I got a call back and they said, my client would like to send you something in gratitude. And then I said, okay, and went back to work and a check showed up in the mail. And that was the first moment that I thought, wow, you know, it was just abundance showing up for just something I did that felt so natural. And then it snowballed. And within six months, I was on a major radio station in Los Angeles. You might've heard of Lee Cigar, The Aware Show. Mm. And, and so, yeah. so anyhow, um, she coined the phrase. So you're like a human MRI and the name stuck. So that's where that comes from. And so, because in my work as pure medical intuition, it's very specific. This organ, that problem, this pain, that digestive issue, parasite, poison, whatever it may be. Again, it's not like, oh, well, you had a, a bad upbringing. Oh, well, no, no, no. It's when I'm in that mode, it's, it's right to it. So again, but because of my own life challenges and health issues that have been brought on by all of, in my opinion, bad medicine and bad dentistry, um, I've learned so much. So I have a lifetime of personal experience um, overcoming migraine headaches, um, toxins, poisons, heavy metal detoxing. So I have lived the life of perhaps part of the hardest person to help. And I use that as part of my practice. And again, I do have supplements that I make available, um, everything from A to Z that would be specific for that person and helping them. And I'm always learning. There's always more to learn. I, and even just the vitamins and minerals, there's always more to understand. And so I, I, if a person, one client, I'm viewing their lungs, they're all filled up with water. She says, well, I've been very upset lately. I said, ma'am, you have pneumonia. You need to get on antibiotics. So ultimately, if it is something that a person needs to go have surgery, something that is like, I've had people call me on the way to the emergency room. <laughs> and you're shaking your head. Yeah. Well, is it it, because it's, you mean where they talked to you already and they knew and like, they, and then they're there or like, they're just on the way and they're getting more advice from you. They're on their way to the uh, emergency room. It's like, oh, what, you know, what should I do right now? Get the emergency room, let the doctors deal with it, but call me before you do any surgery, you know? And they, oh, oh, do you think so? Just call me if it comes up. Um, another client uh, was doing, looking at their intestinal tract. And it usually takes me at least an hour to go through organ and system because I look on, I put on the glasses, if you will, and it shows me the jaw and I work through the jaw and then I start talking about each tooth. And, then I go to the throat and, and the brain and the pineal gland and all these things, but it takes me time to focus, resolve, and uh, illuminate the issue that the person is having. In my true divinity, my goal is to be able to see that and help that person heal instantly. That's my goal. That's my driving point. So you're doing a lot of get... healing as part of this too, right? So there's a diagnostic aspect and then there's a lot of healing that you're also doing. And especially when something comes up well, again, like I mentioned the chicken earlier, uh, the woman uh, basically hooked on fried chicken. But once we got that issue, the thorn that was in her side out, all of a sudden her body could heal. 
another woman wanted to lose weight and I gave her this, 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 and this. And she dropped 30 pounds in eight weeks. And then she was upset because she lost weight too quickly. And it's like, well, what do you do? You know, it's just like, you want to lose weight. Um, but again, there's more and more factors to it. Um, that said, for each individual, and this is what it's about, each individual is completely different. Though I sometimes have uh, themes of the week. It's like one person after another. Um, I had a, a cluster of cancer patients. I gave them recommendations for the different cancers. Both women within a two weeks had improved numbers from the doctor. And one said, okay, I'm fine. I don't know I didn't need anything now. Jesus will take care of me. And that was that. It's like, well, you know, you still need, well, no, I'm fine now. Okay, call me if you need me. No, I'm fine. You know, and the other one is like, uh, I got to get back together. So again, everybody has their own free will choice. And I honor that. And so much of, if it's something as simple as a historical life issue, then we can get to the root of that. And that often comes up and sometimes beyond. And so out of this work of just pure physical manifestation of healing, it's also now the spiritual because the both have evolved as I have to understand what I'm doing. Yeah, and I get it. It's tricky working with people too. Is like something arises in us and like, is it ours or is it something, a real message? And wanting to honor everyone in their process at the same time too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for example, worked with a woman um, came up that, uh, and I said, I'll just share what I'm seeing, is that uh, there was a child and you caused the child to have an, you had an abortion, which was, uh, you know, ooh, a uh, real big no-no and it was a tribe. And so Neil say you were ostracized. So it wasn't the abortion that killed you but rather you were shunned by the tribe. And as I got goosebumps saying this, and she was feeling the same energy and she'd been to other healers and people and I've cleared old stuff. When people come to me, they get the clearing they're seeking. And strangely enough, I have so many clients say, well, I've already had that work done. I have this taken care of. And then I dive into it and they start sweating. They start having these reactions like, wow, this never happened before. And it's because in the practice as an esoteric Buddhist healer, I'm bringing in a lineage of 2,500 years, master to disciple. And all of those Buddhas, the wisdom keepers are all engaging rather than just justing. And so it is an honor to be able to do this and to see the transformation before my eyes and the person to experience it. Um, again, I've lost count of the time somebody says, well, you know, I've had this fixed or I've had that taken care of. And we dive in, it's like, oh, goodness. So that's, that's the nature. I mean, everybody has their own path. And my goal is to basically put myself out of work, that I work with someone and heal them, and they're, they're done. Generally, the most I've ever seen a client to resolve, three visits. So now they may choose other paths or other directions, that's fine, but it's three visits. In the work of the soul convergence, or the soul safari where I dive in. Again, it's been three times. Usually I get most of the big issues on the first visit and people are visibly renewed. I can only describe it as a sacred silence. When someone's in, engaged with this and we dive in looking at multiple aspects of ancient universe travel, that when we clear these deep, deep, deep issues beyond consciousness, even beyond even the soul's consciousness of time, way beyond the Akashic records. And that's another thing. I've had people say, oh, I read Akashic records and I fix this and I fix that. And people are still having issues. So when, when I do this deep dive, that, that silence, because I never tell the person what they're gonna see. I never tell them what we're doing. We just dive in. And they share with me their experience and we work through that. So much like, what do you think of this thing? Well, I've never seen that. We start rotating it. What do you think now? Wow, that's interesting. This is what I'm experiencing. Okay, what do you think now? Yeah. So they get to experience their life. I have other yes. clients say- You're, you're, you're yeah. ensuring that you don't get caught in a conceptual path with them. You're playing with the actual experience so that things are more integrated. When it's oh happening. yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a good way to put it. It's not like, well, imagine yourself going down a path and imagine yourself seeing the first time you felt this way and imagine that's that's hypnosis. I don't do hypnosis. 
So. Well, it sounds like you've worked with so many people in so many ways. There's so much that you could share with us. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Again, um, I really have to write my master book, or at least my first book, and get that going. I'm going to set 2021 as I finish. I started a book on 15 healing secrets. I have to finish it. And then I want to be able to pull the covers off and really deep dive um, all these conversations, many of which I still have on recording um, and more. So uh, looking forward to it. If people want to learn more about you and connect with you, where do they find you on the web? Uh, my website is thehumanmri.com um, or on Facebook, The Human MRI. I prefer the, going through my website. The best way to reach me, reach me through my website. Uh, a direct number is there to set an appointment. When that just, it's the, the shortest distance because I love so, social media. But again, if I have to jump off of it to go find the information, um, I know some people live and die by Facebook. Personally, I'm focused on the person, not on the blitz. So best way to reach me is through my, my website. But again, people can contact me through Facebook and often do. That's great, great. Well, thank you so much, Justin. It was lovely chatting. I'm so excited to be sharing your work with people. Well, well thank you so much. You're welcome. And for those of you listening and watching, you can find out more about all of our events at mewefairs.com. That's M-E-W-E-F-A-I-R-S.com. Thanks again.